In this video, we're going to be going through the easy questions from the Equations of Motion homework. As usual, use this video to mark your work or to help you with some of the harder questions. Question 1a. Question 1a. The following quantities are used to describe the motion of an object, distance, acceleration, velocity, displacement and speed. Complete the table to show whether they are scalar or vector. So distance is a scalar, it has a size and not a direction, and same for speed. However, acceleration, velocity, and displacement are all vector quantities. That means that you have to have both a size and magnitude and a direction associated with them. Question 1b. A runner completes a full lap of the running track shown in figure one in a time of 52.8 seconds. Calculate the average speed of the runner across the entire track. So the equation for speed is distance divided by time. That's distance, not displacement if we're doing speed because that's a scalar quantity. So his distance is going to be 200 meters. And the time it's taken him is 52.8 meters per second. So we do one divided by the other and you should get 3.79 meters per second. So remember at A level, instead of writing M slash S, we write meters seconds to the power of minus one. And part C, state the average velocity. So it says also to explain your answer. So I'll do it as I go. So velocity, first of all, we need to remember our equation for velocity is displacement over time. It's not distance over time. And because it is a circular track, he starts and ends at the same place. So his displacement is going to be zero meters per second. So because it's three marks, we might want to state that in words as well, to just to write out, because it's a circular track, he starts and ends in exactly the same position. So his displacement is going to be zero. And then question 1D, define instantaneous velocity. And the definition for instantaneous velocity is the velocity of an object at any given point of time. So to help you remember that, instantaneous just means instant. So at any point, for example, t equals 3 after 3 seconds, what is his velocity at that point in time? Question 2A. A skydiver jumps from a plane, forces A and B act on the skydiver, and he maintains their position until they open the parachute, label the forces A and B. So if, we, if you're currently doing the kinematics module, you might not have learned about forces yet. Um, so force A that's coming up is going to be from the air resistance. And the force pulling him downwards is going to be due to his mass, and the force is called weight. Question 2b gives us a velocity time graph from the moment the skydiver leaves the plane and then falls with the parachute open. So we need to describe the acceleration between the times 0 and 30 first of all. So if I just draw a line at 30 about there. So we've got a curve. So whenever we've got a straight line here, um, at an angle, that's accelerating. So a curve means it's accelerating but not at a constant rate. So in the acceleration at any point is equal to the gradient of that line. So if I draw a couple of tangents to this line. So right at the beginning, it's quite a steep gradient. Then if we look at the top of this curve, it's quite a shallow gradient. So what that shows is that the rate of acceleration is actually decreasing as the time goes on. And for part, I, I. I'll switch colours so you can see what I'm up to. We're looking at t equals 30 seconds and t equals 41 seconds. So we've got a flat bit of line there. And if we have a look at that flat bit, the velocity is constant at 50 seconds. And the question asks, describe the acceleration. So there's going to be no acceleration because it's a constant velocity at that point. And that leads on to 2c, the terminal velocity. So that's going to be the highest velocity. What velocity does he get to? And we've just read from the graph that was 50 metres per second. Question 
question 2D, compare the magnitudes of force A and force B from figure 1. And I've just drawn a little diagram to remind you of which way those forces were going. So in part I, um, it's asking for the first 30 seconds again. So it was accelerating. And that has got to mean that force B going down has got to be bigger than force A. So we've got force B has got to be bigger than force A. Or the overall force wouldn't cause it to accelerate. And the next bit is saying at th between 30 and 41 seconds. So it wasn't accelerating, it was at a constant velocity. And that's going to mean that our forces are balanced. And that is from the equation F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. So to have acceleration, we do need an overall force. So for the second part, part II, they must be balanced because there is no overall acceleration. Question 3A, an aircraft takes 15 seconds to reach 288 kilometers per hour. Show that this is 80 meters per second. <clears throat> so we need to know what a kilometer and what an hour is for this. So the way we work it out to get it into meters per second is we change our 288. Instead of into kilometers, we change it into meters. So we need to add three zeros in the end. And then when we divide it by an hour, we need to think how many seconds is that. So it's 60 seconds in a minute and then 60 minutes in an hour. So we do 288,000 divided by 60 times 60 and you do get 80 meters per second. Question 3b, assuming it starts at rest, so that means its initial velocity is zero and the acceleration is constant, calculate the acceleration of the aircraft. So the equation for acceleration is delta v, so that means change in velocity divided by time. Our change in velocity is going to be 80 meters per second because it starts from rest and we divide it by the time it took 15 seconds. So you get 5.3 meters per second. Question 3C, show the minimum distance is 600 metres. So this is going to be a SUVAT equation. So we're going to write down what we know. Our distance is going to stay the same. That's what we're working out. Our initial velocity is zero. Our final velocity is going to be 80. And the other thing we know is our time is going to be 15 seconds. So we have a look at our equations and see which one applies here. This time it is x equals v plus u divided by 2 times t, and we'll pop in all of our numbers. So we're going to have v plus u is just going to be 80 divided by 2 times 15, and you get x equals 600 meters. 3D, this shows a displacement time graph, and we need to use the graph to describe when it's still, when it's stationary, when it's accelerating, or when it's going in the opposite direction. So the first one is when it's stationary, and that's going to be between B and C because it's at a constant displacement. Its um, displacement from the start point has not changed, so it must be still. So that's from B to C. Accelerating. So this is the first part. So we've got two curved parts here. One is accelerating and one is decelerating. The easiest way to work out the difference is to draw a little tangent to the graph. So for example, if I draw a tangent here, a straight line there, that's quite a low gradient, so it's a low speed. Whereas if I draw one at this point, it's got a high gradient, it's going to be a high speed. So therefore, it must be accelerating from 0 to A. So from A to B then, the next curve, it's decelerating. So it gets to our stationary point from B to C. And then from C to D, that's when it's going in the other direction. So it's going backwards, its displacement's getting smaller and smaller, it's getting closer to our start point all the time. So we'll say C to D. Question 4a gives us a velocity time graph of a bus traveling between two bus stops. First thing you need to realize is this is a velocity time graph, not a displacement time graph. So a straight line and a flat line means something slightly different. So describe the acceleration at the beginning. So we've got zero to 90. It's a straight line. That means its velocity is changing, but it's at a constant rate. So it's going to be constant acceleration. Then we've got between 90 and 180. If we have a look, it's at 5 metres per second and it stays at 5 metres per second. So that means there is no acceleration. You could also add to that if you want to write it's a constant velocity. 
And then again, we've got a straight line coming back down. So its velocity is decreasing. It's not necessarily going in a different direction. Its velocity is decreasing. It's slowing down. So it's going to be a, it's decelerating, but it's also at a constant rate because it's a straight line rather than a curved line. Part 4b also links with this graph is to calculate for part i, 0 to 90 seconds, calculate the initial acceleration. So to work out our acceleration, it's always going to be the change in velocity divided by time. So our change in velocity goes up to 5 meters per second and it takes 90 seconds. So if we type that into our calculator, you get 0 0.0056 meters per second minus two so it does state you need to give the appropriate unit for the mark and its acceleration so it's meters per second squared which we write as meters seconds to the power of minus two on to 4c how far does it travel whilst it's accelerating so to calculate distance traveled we actually have to do the area under the graph whilst it's accelerating so that's going to be the area of a triangle which is going to be a half times how wide it is, times how tall it is. I think I just got those the wrong way around, but half times five times 90, and you get 225 meters. So that's the area under that triangle at the beginning of our graph, because it looked a little bit like this. And it's this one that we've just worked out. So it was a height at five and the time was 90. And part 4D was to calculate the deceleration of the bus. So very similar, it's going to be the change in velocity divided by time. And it was still, the change in velocity was 5. And the time this time, it was a bit quicker, 40 seconds. So it was 0.125 metres per second squared. Final question, question 5. We've got a marble rolling off the edge of a table of height h with an initial velocity of 0 0.50 metres per second. It follows a curved path and it hits the floor 0.3 seconds later. We're going to presume there's no air resistance. That's a standard for this kind of question. Considering only the horizontal motion, calculate the distance d between the edge of the table and the point where it hits the floor. So it's given us a good hint here. We're just going to be using its horizontal motion, which stays constant. We don't think about accelerating at all when we're talking about the horizontal motion because only the acceleration part will only come from gravity, which is our vertical motion. So that means we're just going to use speed equals distance divided by time for this. And we need to work out the distance. So we'll rearrange that. Speed times time is going to give us our distance. So let's pop our speed in 0 0.5 times the time that it took 0 0.3. That would give us 0 0.15 meters. So that is how far it travels across. That's our D, our distance, not our height. Question 5b. Consider only the vertical motion this time and show the tabletop is 0 0.44 metres above the floor. So acceleration is going to be constant and it's going to be due to gravity. So that means we could use our SUVA equations. So we're going to put our initial velocity is zero. Our displacement is going to end up being our height. That's what we're trying to work out. Our final velocity, we don't know that, so we can actually just leave that. Acceleration we know is going to be due to gravity and it's going to be 9.81. And the other thing that we know is the time is going to take 0 0.30 seconds. So we need to check our SUVA equations, choose which one is the most appropriate. It's going to be x equals ut plus half of a t squared. So that we're working out our height and we're going to put on our numbers. So the first bit is going to be zero because we've got no initial velocity. So what we're going to type into our calculators is half times 9.81 times 0 0.3 squared. And the answer that you get for that is 0 0.44, which is what the question wanted you to prove. And on to 5c, calculate the vertical velocity at the moment it strikes the ground. So we're calculating v this time, and we can use v equals u plus at. Our initial velocity is zero, and we're going to add 9.81 times our time, 0 0.3, and you're going to get 2.94 metres per second. 
and onto 5D, on the figure, sketch the graphs to show the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity as it falls. So our horizontal, we know that's going to stay constant. It's going to go across, we're ignoring air resistance, so it doesn't really matter where we draw it on our graph, it's going to be a nice straight line. There we are, a nice straight line on our horizontal graph, and we're going to measure it at 0.5. O was our velocity and 0.30 was our time. So we can even add some dots just to show that's that's what we've drawn it to. And for our vertical, it's going to be um, accelerating but at a constant rate due to gravity. So you need to get your ruler and you need to draw a straight line, but it's going to be at a constant gradient. So it doesn't actually matter because we haven't got any squares on here, what gradient we draw it as long as we label it correctly. So it's going to accelerate until its maximum velocity, which was 2.94, and that took it 0.30 seconds.